Hi everybody, this is Bastian and um, this is the second video on uh, the Black Redeemer and the Holy Star prep. So we have seen in our first video um, what we hope to achieve when playing this trap. Of course, Black doesn't have to follow the trapping line and can play defensive moves. And this is a game against a 2000 rated opponent where exactly that happens. So now we can see what we can do um, to create a winning game. After uh, our trapping lines um, have been countered. So the game starts out with d4, d5, e4, pawn takes, knight c3, knight f6. The classical black mordemer and the uh, opening is still the same as, as uh, the previous game. f3, pawn takes, queen takes, the rider gambit. And now in the previous game, black took on the second pawn with queen takes pawn on d4. However, now he plays a defensive move, a6. And this move controls uh, the square on b5, which is necessary for us to complete the Halosar trap. So if random move is played, let's say knight to h3, queen takes pawn, bishop to e3 to chase the queen, queen to b4, we castle, bishop to g4, pinning queen and rook, and now we want to play knight to b5, threatening the mate. But this is no longer possible because of um, pawn takes knight. So a6 is a valid counter against the Halosaur trap. But what do we do now? We have sacrificed um, one pawn already and another pawn is under attack by the queen. So how do we continue? We protect the pawn with knight g to e2. There's only one possibility to protect because the f3 square has been covered. Black plays knight to c6, adding more pressure to the pawn. I play bishop to f4. Now I could play bishop to e3 to continue and protect the pawn, but bishop to f4 will eventually recapture the pawn anyways and is a more aggressive move. So black takes the pawn, knight takes pawn, knight recaptures, queen takes and we see the defense of the pawn on c7 is gone, bishop recaptures the pawn on c7. Now we haven't castled yet, but the queen is on an open file and we have limited the movement of the king. So I'm threatening rook to um, d1. So let's say if a random move is played, say a6, rook to d1, queen uh, flees to safety, rook to d8, checkmate. So black wants to get the queen out of the way as soon as possible, off of the open file, and plays queen to b4 uh, immediately attacking the pawn, pinning the knight. So now what? I cannot castle, because if I castle, we get bishop to g4, pinning queen and rook, and in this case the pin will work. If queen to um, b7, we can see that that square is covered by the queen, so that doesn't work. And the other idea in the Halosaur trap that may happen, uh, rook to d8 check doesn't work because rook on a8 has become available. And we will um, simply lose the rook. So castling doesn't work. If instead rook to d1, we get the same problem. Bishop to um, g4, attacking queen, attacking rook, and freeing up the space of the rook on a8. So 
So, what should white play under these circumstances? And this is what makes um, openings like the Black Mordemer um, so um, aggressive and dangerous because the right attacking move that black didn't see bishop to b5 check completely ignoring the defense of the pawn on b5 now the check has to be responded to so black simply takes and here you can see we have created a blockade of a pawn on b5 and cut off the defense of the queen on b4 this means the pawn on b7 is less protected and it only has one uh, protection. Remember that um, for um, the rook to become neutralized, this bishop needed to move. And this will mean that the pawn on b7 will be hanging. So now I castle. Let's say if bishop to g4 is played now, I can grab uh, the pawn on b7. Um, the queen can no longer be recaptured. If bishop takes rook, I can play rook takes bishop with a winning game uh, for white. If a random move is played, we get rook to a d8 checkmate. So finally, knight to d7 is played to block uh, the rook from uh, checkmating black's king. Which is another way to um, prevent against uh, the checkmate. So we continue our attack with rook takes um, knight and exchange sacrifice. Black grabs the rook and now there is no longer any defense on the b7 pawn. So I recapture threatening the rook. Black plays f6, it's for a little choice to escape mate. Queen takes rook. Um, we notice that the queen cannot step uh, into the defense of the rook because all those squares are covered. So I grab the rook, king flees, queen to d5 check. Bishop blocks, queen takes pawn, destroying my own blockade, queen takes queen, and knight recaptures. And now uh, we have reached the middle game, but we can see that I have one pawn advantage over black, and my pieces are better developed. Furthermore, I have a pawn island uh, that are three past pawns which will be uh, a one game for um, white. So it looks like um, black can equalize material with bishop takes pawn, but that's ju just, uh, that just traps uh, the bishop. So black prize bishop to d5 to attack the weak pawn on g2. I could protect with knight uh, rook to um, g1, but instead I simply promote, and there's not much black can do against it. Bishop takes rook to g1, bishop to um, d5, d4. So I am pushing my pawn island forward. d5, rook to d1, rook to the open file, bishop f3, rook to d8. This complicates black's development. G6, hoping to um, trade off pieces, perhaps. King to b2, king e7, a5, bishop g7. 
a trade of pieces a6 king to d7 a7 so we just continue uh, pushing the pawn f5 it's clear now that black will uh, be too late in promo promoting his pawns king to c3 g5 king to c4 f4 bishop to uh, b6 and this covers all three squares that the pawns need to pass g4 knight to c7 protecting the a8 square that's under attack uh, by black's bishop or covered by black's bishop king to c8 king to uh, b5 so i want some protection for my bishop we'll soon see why g3 pawn takes pawn pawn recaptures a8 queen bishop is forced to recapture knight recaptures and now king to b7 for king knight and bishop but I can simply play knight to c7 and we can see why this defense was needed otherwise I lose a minor piece bishop to f6 knight to e8 bishop to e7 c4 h5 keep in mind that um, this bishop is still controlling all the squares Knight to g7, g2, c5. A little bit of a joke here. Um, if black promotes, I can check and counter attack, uh, winning the queen. So, king to a8 was played to get out of that check. Um, c6. Bishop to d8. Of course, we don't want to trade off bishops. Um, bishop goes to g1. h4. Even still, there's a little way for black to um, uh, pause this bishop. King to a6. e4. b5. King to b8. b6. Now, if bishop to f6, for instance, I can play bishop to h2 check, bishop to e5, bishop takes check, then king to c8 will lead to um, knight to e6, promoting b7 checkmates, so that's very nice. Or um, king to a8. B7 check and mate, also possible. But bishop to f6 wasn't played. Bishop takes pawn was played instead. Um, sacrificing the bishop for a pawn, I recapture. So there's no longer a mate threat, but. Um, there's no way for black to stop the promotion although um, he still has three pawns and I need to promote my last pawn king to c8 knight f5 h3 knight to d6 check king to d8 c7 check king to d7 c8 promoting to the queen king takes knight Queen to f5, e3, bishop h2 check. Now I'm no longer using the bishop to um, prevent black from promoting, but it is used in a mating pattern. King e7, king c7, locking in the king, allowing g1 promoting to the queen, but I don't recapture because simply bishop to d6 check. King to e8, queen f8 is a checkmate. So that's a game um, using the black mordimer uh, when the holy star trap is no longer fully possible. But uh, we can still use the same concepts 
and watch for flaws in Black's defense, uh, which will allow us to um, win the game. So I hope you enjoyed watching this variation. Um, please leave a comment and have a great evening.